Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the McNeese PM Mach 2. We'll be talking about that deployment here in a sec. Uh, very interesting knife. As per usual, I've got a lot to say. I'll be linking this guy right down below for people who want to check it out for themselves. This is a US made knife, an expensive knife, but definitely a USA made knife. Thanks so much to the gentleman who sent this in for review. He wishes to remain anonymous, so I'm gonna respect that. And thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. There's a link for Patreon right down below. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. All right, let's go ahead and get a measurement of this guy. Very stout, tanky knife for sure. Overall length is coming in at six and a half inches. Blade length is coming in right at the three inch mark, so be careful about that if you live in an area that's got a three inch blade law. Cutting edge is coming in at about 2.85 inches overall. Let's do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. You can see here it's closer to the size of the uh, Rat 2, but it's got the height and sort of, I guess, yeah, the height of the, uh, the, the Rat 1. How about up against the uh, Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue and its little brother, the Mini Griptilian. Again, closer to the size of the smaller one. Um, I'd say it's got a little bit, ergonomic room is very similar if you look at where you're actually supposed to put your hands to the uh, uh, Mini Griptilian. And cutting edge is almost identical to the Mini Grip, but this is a much tankier knife, absolutely. And we skipped we, we skipped the uh, PM2 and Para 3. Uh, Spyderco PM2 and Para 3. Definitely closer to the length of the Para 3, but it's still much shorter though. Cutting edge compared to the Para 3 is very, very similar. It's just got much less handle room. How about carry profile up against the Spyderco Para 3? Let me get that out here real quick. This knife feels like an absolute tank, but it's really not hardly any thicker than the Para 3. So I think that's important to keep in mind for people who enjoy carrying the Para 3. How about length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3? You can see here it's nowhere near the same length as either, and it's nowhere near as tall. So despite being kind of a chunky little knife, it shouldn't create that much more of a carry profile problem versus like the Para 3, right? Let's go ahead and do a measurement of blade stock thickness because that is a thick blade for a tiny knife. And some people like that. I honestly kind of enjoy the novelty of that in right, some knives. 100, it's not crazy, it says 147 thousandths. It just, I don't know, it just looks really dense, especially out at the tip. Um, let's take a look at the inside here real quick. The, uh, there we go. Inside of this knife, you can see it does have some milling in there, so it has been milled out a little bit for weight reduction, that's nice. This is titanium and CPM 20 CV. Weight, I'm gonna guess this weighs probably right around four ounces, let's find out. Three, no, less than three and a half, 3.39. It's not bad for people who are big into ratios, it's not gonna be your favorite thing in the world, right? This also probably isn't gonna be super fun to carry in athletic shorts or light pant material. Use your best judgment. To me, this is a jeans carry knife or a heavy duty, maybe like cargo shorts carry knife, something like that. Probably not a fitted dress pants knife though. Um, let's see your hardware check. Let's get out my tools here. Um, I believe all of the hardware is fairly large. Is that a T10? Maybe it's a T8. Let's try T8. Looked at it and at first I thought that's a, that's a T10. They're real deep in there. Uh, that's a T8 and the adjustment head is also a T8. Okay, how about the pocket clip screws? Those are also, wow, okay, they just have a totally different size to them. Okay, so minimal body screws and they go all the way through the other side, which I've said many times I really don't have a problem with, right? So that's nice, simple frame lock construction. This should be really easy to take apart. All right, let's talk about this thing. So um, these are US made knives. They are not made in large batch, right? We are in the same territory of competition as your Hinderer knives, your Chris Reeve knives. Um, this is a good looking knife. The way that the profile is, it's very straight for, straightforward and simple and has that sort of, you know, American robust look to it. It really looks like what we see from a lot of American cutlery in the, at this price point. Um, so there's a little bit of what I enjoy about Hinderer knives in here, especially with the finish. In fact, I gotta be honest, I enjoy this finish 
more than what Hinderer does, and I think it's probably my favorite part of this knife. That is a really, really nice tumbled finish, and it really gives that premium look to it. I like that. This has this sort of, I don't know if it's like a deep sort of earthy turquoise kind of, I don't know, or blue jean, I don't know if you, what, you probably don't want to call it turquoise, right? It's nice. And they have this cool, like, kind of hammered finish on the pivot. It also extends to the other side of the pivot. There's some nice little touches here, right? Um, it's also, the action is also really good in terms of like the smoothness on the inside of the pivot. This is running on bearings and it's nice and smooth. Disengagement of the titanium liner lock is also good because they've carved this area out right here so you can really get your thumb in here. There is no steel lock bar insert, which is, doesn't necessarily need it, but it's one of those things that we like to see. It's always been a, there are a lot of really expensive American knives that for whatever reason don't, I mean, like I can understand it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily need it. In some situations, depending on the geometry, it can make the situation worse, but it can also increase the like the, the life of the lock bar. And some people absolutely prefer it, right? I think um, it's one of those things that we expect to see so much on a newer knife. Um, and it's probably a good idea from a warranty standpoint. If something goes wrong, they can simply pop that chip out, put a new one in, and maybe if they have to alter the geometry a little bit to get the new one to accept, you know, then great. I, I think that's probably a better idea. I generally, you know, I'm kind of like, I don't really care if it's not there, but if, it, if I had my choice, I'd like to see it. That's kind of the situation that I'm in uh, with this knife. The thumb studs. Um, so this is a smaller knife, and when you've got the blade deployed, honestly, I mean, it's okay. Um, it's not, I mean, like, if you put your finger right here, your index finger in this little slot they've carved out, I'm kind of, you know, I'm, my pinky's out here, so it's only three finger. If I choke up to this area right here behind the blade, ah, it's all right. It's not anything spectacular. They do have these areas nicely knocked down. It's just kind of an awkward grip, and I'm really smashed in here because it's a smaller knife. I definitely, definitely would prefer that this was just larger overall for me. Perhaps an eight and a half inch version of this would be really cool. And I gotta be honest with you guys, does that exist? I'm not really sure. I did a brief look and didn't see anything, but maybe I'm just wrong about that. And if I am, then I apologize. Because of that, because of the profile of the handle, the position of the thumb stud for me is not optimal. I want to get underneath here and push up, but I found that, you know, I have to watch out for the lock bar. I got to kind of brace on the pocket clip and then I have to fire sort of that way. The thumb studs are also a little bit kind of, it's just like a straight barrel and it comes up to a sharp corner. It's kind of sharp corner. Sorry about that. Anyways, what I was saying is there's the thumb studs, I think probably wouldn't be like the sharpness of them, it wouldn't be such a problem if the positioning of them and the angle that I needed to push to deploy were different. But it's, it is where it is and I'm not sure where, I mean, it's not like they could go higher because of the profile of the frame and if they go lower, it's just worse, right? So you can figure it out and as you can see, I've got it kind of figured out and you can even, if you get your finger in exactly the right place, which I'm doing a bad job of, you can do the reverse flick, but it is definitely not comfortable and definitely not optimal. Um, as is the case with all things, you will probably adapt to it. Uh, in fact, I'm adapting more and more as I play with it, but uh, it's not perfect. Um, it's not my favorite thing in the entire world. Um, moving on here, the blade looks great. Let me get some of my fingerprints off of here real quick. Something that I appreciate is just the simple um, McNeese, and then it says PM with some stars, and on this side it says CPM 20 CV and USA. That's nice. I don't mind that on the blade at all. The blade itself looks great. Very robust. Absolutely. A lot of thickness carried out to that tip, which is great if you're looking for tip strength, especially uh, steel like 20 CV that doesn't have a lot of toughness. Some extra robustness in the geometry will help a little bit. I don't think you should worry too much about snapping that tip, but then again, don't abuse your, your knives. Uh, the flat carries out about 85% the length of the blade, and it's pretty prominent, so it does not have a lot of room to drop down towards the edge. And let me tell you, that edge is definitely thick. Will it slice? Will it cut? I mean, yeah, but it's not going to be a performance cutter, right? You're not going to get that satisfactory shh. You're not going to get that. Um, it'll cut. It will do it. Um, it's just a, it's, it's a thick it's a thick geometry. In fact, I think it's a little bit too much. Um, I, I think this, and I don't usually say this, but I think um, it's kind of needlessly thick. It probably definitely, <laughs> probably definitely could be thicker. Another area I don't really like is this final area, right? The, the final cutting bevel down here is a little bit goofy. I don't really like how it's kind of just coming to this goofball area right there. I also don't really like how the thumb studs are kind of in the cutting path, right? So if you're gonna cut straight down, it's, it's gonna get in your way. 
The blade otherwise looks pretty good. It's just kind of got a goo it's like wider. The final cutting bill is wider than thinner and then it kind of curves and then it's a little goofy back here. So that's an area I think that could be improved. The reason that I say that is because I've never, I, I feel like this is kind of a, I want to say if it's new, right? It's new to me, but what I want to see, is, I look at this and I'm like, that's attractive. A lot of people looked at this and thought, that's really attractive. I like how this that looks. There are a lot of areas on here that I think could be improved, a lot of little tiny things, and we'd have a super winner, right? And th that's one of those areas, the edge, right? Uh, the, the way that the finish looks and the shape of the blade and everything is fine, but that's, that's an area that I think needs to be improved, especially to people who want to spend this much money on a knife. I don't mind the seating of the hardware. I think people would, I don't know, this is kind of a silly thing, but they're sunk down in there. I think I'd kind of like to see it flush or kind of close to the top, but that's kind of a stupid nitpicky little thing. There is a lanyard hole back here for lanyard people. Um, it's not really in the way of anything, so that's fine. We have a couple of very plain standoffs. Some people might like how that looks. I like a little bit more detail on something that costs a little more money. I think that standoffs are often overlooked um, you know, but even by the people who are buying them, but I like to see something a little bit more dressy and with a little bit more detail than just a, just a regular barrel, right? I think the number, the total, you know, pieces of hardware on this, it's, it's very minimal and that's nice. I like that, but I just, I want a little bit more, right? I mean, in fact, there's a lot of areas, right? I mean, like there are places on this knife where it could stand to have a little bit more going on, just a little bit more zest and pepper and fire and it's just very straightforward and that and the, with the combination of some of the other slightly problematic areas on the knife it's just eh, it's kind of underwhelming the pocket clip is certainly another example of in fact it is absolutely the most underwhelming part of this whole knife this is a flat plain pocket clip in fact i it's probably yeah it's still titanium but it's just so boring it works barely I mean, it. Do, I don't want to say barely. It does work, right? It doesn't carry any lower than a hinderer, right? So I can't complain about the carry depth. I don't like that the pocket clip's sitting right on top of the titanium. I don't like how thin it is. It just seems like this, well, we got to put a pocket clip on it, and then there you go. I'd like to see something more, I don't know, with more personality geared towards this knife specifically. A lot of people would say, well, the hinderer clip is not too far off from that, and you don't seem to mind it. Ah, uh, I think the Hinder Eclipse got a little bit more going on. The reason I'm talking about this is because this is in the direct competitive, you know, price arena, for sure. The Hinder Eclipse got a little bit more going on for it. On top of that, it's massively modular with all of their models, right? So it's that specific, and it is, in my opinion, a little bit better design. The swoop is a little bit better. I like the slot in the middle of it. This just kind of feels like blah, right? It's kind of a C minus of a pocket clip. Something 3D milled, something that's actually uh, recessed into the titanium, right? Now they'd have to, if they want to make a left hand position one, then they'd have to put a recessed area over here, which is, you know, it can be an eyesore. But if not, at least recess the area, right? If it's got to be right handed, only recess it right here so you don't have that wiggly, goofy, whatever. And so it doesn't look like this, right? It's very not super great. Um, another reason I think it might be a good idea to have a steel lock bar insert is because it can double as, say it with me, an over travel stop, which this knife does not really have. Yeah, the pocket clip is sitting right there on that split between the frame and the frame lock. Um, so it adds some resistance if you do try to push it too hard, but it, not really, right? So it would be nice to have that. It's just not there. The knife locks up at Mm, a little over 50%, 55, maybe 60%, which is fine. It doesn't really bother me that much. There's a little bit of stickiness, which, okay, not really that big of a deal. It'll work itself out over time. The knife absolutely locks up completely and totally solid. There's a curiously thin stop pin. Little tiny bit of shouldering. I don't know that I really care that the stop pin's thin. It just looks, it just looks funny, right? The centering is absolutely spot on, so that's great. I don't have a problem with that. Um, so, you know, will this knife function? Yeah, it'll absolutely function. It's just, here's what they, they want for this. They want 460 bucks or so. It's like 460, 467, something like that. Um, so I, I honestly, I'd like it. Uh, the, the smaller size is fine. I think that there, if there's not already, there should be a larger option. On the smaller size, I don't like the position of the, of the thumb studs. I also don't like how sharp they are. I do not like the fact that there's not a steel lock bar insert or over travel stop on this knife. I think you should have it. I think the edge needs to be improved, it needs to be more consistent, right? I don't like to see the wonky bevels on something like this. I think it probably could be a little bit thinner. 
um, which is something I don't normally say. It's just, this is really, I shouldn't criticize there because I don't criticize Hinderer for it. And it's not like Hinderers are any, you know, less thick behind the edge. It's, I don't know. Maybe it's because the edge seems a little bit better on Hinderer knives and Chris Reeve knives, right? Knives that are in the competitive price zone. But the wonkiness, at least, of the final cutting bevel, uh, that I don't, I don't, I don't like to see that. Um, but uh, yeah, and then the pocket clip, I think, needs to be something completely and totally different. And then we're approaching something, you know, that is uh, where people expect it to be. I would like to see, obviously, maybe different colors and maybe something else going on in the titanium frame. As it sits here, there are a lot of little tiny things that make this a bit underwhelming. And I know a lot of people like this knife. If you pay the money for it, is it going to function? Is it going to be a dependable, functional cutting tool? Yeah, it's just really underwhelming versus the competition. I'd really like to see an updated version of this, something which just a little bit more. Because the first time I saw this, I was like, wow, that might be my next purchase. I was hoping it was going to be a little bigger. I was a little bit disappointed in the size. But again, I, maybe there's a larger version of this I'm not aware of, right? Maybe the larger version has a thumb stud in a position that would work better for me. And maybe part of the reason I don't like this is because it's so small. This knife is not for me. It might be for you. There are a lot of things out there that are at the same price point that are vastly more polished. These are small batch and I know they're not being made, right? Like there's not a whole bunch of them and I don't, I, I think this is like not a multi-person team or at least that's what I gather. So I'm trying to be not super duper crazy critical here. I think there's a lot of room for improvement and that this design has some potential and it could be something really great. But as it sits right now, it's not really something I want to tell people to rush out and grab. Um, I hope that was fair. I hope you guys got the information you wanted. Um, but that's going to be pretty much it for today. Like I said, if you still want to check this out, there's links for it right down in the description. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at Metal underscore Complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody. And have a great day.